The Battle of Kohima was the turning point of the Japanese Yugo offensive into India in 1944 in the Second World War. The battle was fought in three stages from 4 April to 22 June 1944 around the town of Kohima in Nagaland in northeast India. From 3 to 16 April, the Japanese attempted to capture Kohima Ridge a feature which dominated the road by which the besieged British and Indian troops of 4th Corps at Imphal were supplied. By mid-April, the small British force at Kohima was relieved. From 18 April to 13 May, British and Indian reinforcements counter-attacked to drive the Japanese from the positions they had captured. The Japanese abandoned the ridge at this point but continued to block the Kohima Imphal Road. From 16 May to 22 June, the British and Indian troops pursued the retreating Japanese and reopened the road. The battle ended on the 22nd of June when British and Indian troops from Kohima and Imphal met at Milestone 109, ending the siege of Imphal. The battle is often referred to as the Stalingrad of the East. In 2013, the British National Army Museum voted the Battle of Imphal and Kohima to be Britain's greatest battle. Background the Japanese plan to invade India, codenamed Yugo, was originally intended as a spoiling attack against the British Fourth Corps at Imphal in Manipur, to disrupt the Allied offensive plans for that year. The commander of the Japanese 15th Army, Lieutenant General Renya Mutaguchi, enlarged the plan to invade India itself and perhaps even overthrow the British Raj. The objections of the staffs of various headquarters were eventually overcome, and the offensive was approved by Imperial General Headquarters on 7 January 1944. Part of the plan involved sending the Japanese 31st Division to capture Kohima and thus cut off Imphal. Mutaguchi wished to exploit the capture of Kohima by pushing the 31st Division onto Dimapur the vital railhead and logistic base in the Brahmaputra River Valley. The 31st Division's commander, Lieutenant General Kotoku Sato, was unhappy with his role. He had not been involved in the planning of the offensive, and had grave misgivings about its chances. He had already told his staff that they might all starve to death. In common with many senior Japanese officers, Sato considered Mutaguchi a blockhead. He and Muta Gusi had also been on opposite sides during the split between the Tozihā and Kodohā factions within the Japanese army during the early 1930s, and Sato believed he had reason to distrust Muta Gusi's motives. Prelude Starting on 15 March 1944, the Japanese 31st Division crossed the Chindwin River near Homoling and moved northwest along jungle trails on a front almost 60 miles wide. Although the march was arduous, good progress was made. The left wing of the division, consisting of the bulk of the 58th Regiment and commanded by the division's infantry group commander, Major General Shige Saburo Miyazaki, was ahead of the neighboring formation when they clashed with Indian troops covering the northern approaches to Imphal on 20 March. The Indian troops were the 50th Indian Parachute Brigade under Brigadier Maxwell Hope Thompson at Sangshak. Although they were not Miyazaki's objective, he decided to clear them from his line of advance. The Battle of Sangshak continued for six days. The Parachute Brigade's troops were desperately short of drinking water, but Miyazaki was handicapped by lack of artillery until near the end of the battle. Eventually, as some of the Japanese 15th Division's troops joined the battle, Hope Thompson withdrew. The 50th Parachute Brigade lost 600 men, while the Japanese had suffered over 400 casualties. Miyazaki had also captured some of the food and munitions that had been dropped by the Royal Air Force to the defenders of Sangshak. However, his troops, who had the shortest and easiest route to Kohima, were delayed by a week. 
Meanwhile, the commander of the British 14th Army, Lieutenant General William Slim, belatedly realized that a whole Japanese division was moving towards Kohama. He and his staff had originally believed that, because of the forbidding terrain in the area, the Japanese would only be able to send a regiment to take Kohama. Slim knew that there were few fighting troops, as opposed to soldiers in line of communication units and supporting services in Kohima and none at all at the vital base of Dimapur 30 miles to the north. Dimapur contained an area of supply dumps 11 miles miles long and 1 mile wide. As the fall of Dimapur would have been disastrous for the Allies, Slim asked his superior, General George Gifford, for more troops to protect Dimapur and to prepare to relieve Imphal. The Allies were already hastily reinforcing the Imphal front. As part of this move, the infantry and artillery of 5th Indian Infantry Division were flown from the Arakan, where they had just participated in the defeat of a subsidiary Japanese offensive at the Battle of the Admin Box. While the main body of the division went to Imphal, the 161st Indian Infantry Brigade, commanded by Brigadier Dermot Warren and with 24th Mountain Artillery Regiment Indian Artillery attached, were flown to Dimapur. Early in March, the 23rd Long Range Penetration Brigade was removed from Major General Order Wingate's Chindit Force and was dispatched by rail from around Lalagat to Jorhat, 50 miles north of Dimapur, where they could threaten the flank of any Japanese attack on the base. Gifford and General Claude Affleck, the commander-in-chief of the British Indian Army, also prepared to send the British 2nd Division and Indian 33rd Corps HQ under Lieutenant General Montague Stopford from reserve in southern and central India to Dimapur, by road and rail, until 33rd Corps headquarters could arrive at Dimapur. The HQ of 202 line of communication area under Major General APL, ranking took command of the area.